Hi, my name is Michaela Kling, and this is Abigail King, and we are both junior biology majors. And today we're going to be talking about the antibiotic discovery in soil bacteria in southwestern Pennsylvania. Antibiotics have become resistant to the things they fight against and have caused this worldwide antibiotic crisis. This is from the overuse and misuse of these antibiotics, and it has become worse over time. This caused there to be less options, but there's new technology for genes that investigate new genomes and compare them to known genomes to help determine its resistance factors. Our hypothesis was the organisms at California University of Pennsylvania will be capable of producing antibiotics. And so to do this, we collected one gram of peat soil behind Frick underneath some bushes and created cereal dilutions from that. And then from these cereal dilutions, we created spread plates to obtain single colonies to create master plates. And each lab group actually got their own master plate. Abby and I ended up getting master plate one, as we'll describe a little bit later. And these master plates were then used to look at and complete a few different types of tests. So first we looked at the colony morphology of each of the isolates, and then we completed selective and differential media. And finally, we did the spread patch antibiotic production, where we actually looked for the antibiotic production of these isolates to see if any were antibiotic producers. Okay, um, we completed serial dilutions and ended up with a total of four agar plates. Our goal was to isolate single colonies, and we needed these single colonies to create our math. Plates. We used the 10 to the negative 4 plate to calculate the CFU, which was 1.5 times 10 to the 6 CFU per gram. So as I stated before, we did end up getting master plate 1, and these pictures that you are seeing are both of master plate 1, just from different viewpoints, uh, because we could not go in lab and do this ourselves since we are remote, so we only obtained pictures from our professor. And so we had 12 isolates placed on the agar plates and all 12 actually grew. Some lab groups did not have all 12 that grew, but our plates actually did. And then we characterized them through the morphology of each of the isolates. And we looked at the margin, color, surface texture, surface elevation, and shape. I do want to note, however, that it was a little bit difficult to identify some of these things, especially the surface elevation, since we only did get pictures and we couldn't actually physically touch and see the plates ourselves. And as you can see, there is not much diversity within these isolates. Instead, they are very similar to one another, and so we actually had to complete a few more tests to determine differences between the isolates and see if any were antibiotic producers. Okay. We then use selective and differential medias that test for gram positive or negative bacteria and for carbohydrate metabolism. Our first plate that we used was an eosin methylene blue plate and it shows growth from gram negative bacteria, and the purple color shows lactose fermenting. And as you can see in the top left corner, we did have a lot of growth on our EMB plate due to the pur purple color. Um, our second plate that we did was a mannitol salt agar plate, and the growth is shown for gram positive. However, it is not a perfect test because it doesn't fully inhibit gram negative bacteria. The yellow color on the plate shows mannitol fermenting and the red color shows non mannitol fermenting. And in the bottom left corner, you can see that most of our plate was yellow. We concluded that most were gram negative and mannitol fermenting. However, that 
doesn't give us an answer as to whether they are antibiotic producers. So we had to complete more tests. And so the next test that we actually completed was the antibiotic production, where we completed patch plating. And pretty much what that is, is that you take a bacterial tester strain and you place that onto the agar first, and then you place the isolates on top of that. And that layering effect allows the isolates to grow and even produce clearings if they are antibiotic producers. And so we screened against three different types of organisms, Staphylococcus epidermidis, Bacillus aureus, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And uh, you can actually see that in the bottom picture. I do also want to note that all three plates did have the lawn effect, as you see in the zoomed in top left picture there. Uh, but this top left picture is actually a zoomed in picture of our staph plate because we had two isolates that grew, but only one actually produced a clearing and that was isolate, oh, oh, sorry, that was isolate 11 on the staff plate. And this clearing actually does show that it was positive for antibiotic production. Now I do want to say that Abby and I do think that more tests should be completed on isolate 10 to further see uh, if it was an antibiotic producer for anything else or why it did not produce the clearing as Isolate 11 did. Our first direction we take is to identify the positive organism's taxonomy. We also take it, we could also take it a step further by comparing the positive organism to known producers. And lastly, we could test the soil samples from a different location. So in conclusion, again, uh, we did find an antibiotic producing bacteria in the one gram of peat soil sample that we gathered. And from those single colonies, from the serial dilutions, from the sample, we were able to create the master plate one. And through those isolates on master plate one, we found out that isolate 11 was the antibiotic producer from the Staphylococcus epidermidis plate through the patch plating method. Um, and again, as Abby stated, there were a bunch of other directions that can be completed to continue this work to possibly see if we can find other antibiotic producers, antibiotic, well, to fight this antibiotic crisis with all of these antibiotic resistance. Um, and finally, again, our hypothesis was actually correct because the organisms sampled at CalU are capable of producing antibiotics as we found on the staff plate for isolate 11.